Welcome, YouTubers, to another video about early radio history on the Roaring Twenties Radio YouTube channel. William H. Priest was born in New York City around 1885. He attended the College of New York City and graduated in 1910, and later that year, he found employment as a radio inspector for the state of New York. On April 6, 1917, the United States entered World War I, and Priest joined the U.S. Navy. He was assigned to the Washington Naval Yard, the first Navy installation built in 1799. Priest joined the Radio Engineering and Design Research Division at the base. He would work under Lieutenant W.A. Eaton and alongside of Navy radio expert L.L. L. Jones. At the beginning, there was just the three of them, and together they built up the division by adding more talent to the trio. They would add Louis Hazeltine, the inventor of the Neutrodyne circuit, and Joseph Freed, co-founder of the Freed Eisman Radio Corporation, to the team, along with others. Their division would design all Navy radio communication gear, such as the SC-1420 and the SC-143. Priest left the Navy and joined the Army in January 1918. He was sent to France where he designed and built a communication system for use on the front lines of the war. After the war, Priest found employment at the Wireless Specialty Apparatus Company, which was located at 126 State Street in Boston. His work resulted in many new patents for himself, including, possibly, a patent for the reflex circuit. The patent rights to the reflex circuit in the U.S. get a bit murky. After World War I, the U.S. government would claim a reflex patent granted to two men, Otto von Bronck and Wilhelm Schlomilch, under Title 50 of the U.S. Code titled Alien Property Custodian. The government was facing $40 million in lawsuits for violating radio patents during the war. The government settled the lawsuits by giving the plaintiffs the right to use the reflex circuit in exchange for dropping their complaints. Still, other sources credit William Priest as the inventor of the reflex circuit, and there's still a question of whether Priest ever had a patent issued for his reflex circuit. Priest would leave his job at Wireless Specialty and go to work for the DeForest Company. He would license his reflexing patent to the company, whether he had it or not, and became chief engineer for the company a short time later. As chief engineer, he redesigned the DeForest D7 receiver and renamed it the D10, collecting a royalty of $3.50 for every radio sold. In the fall of 1924, William Priest opened his own radio company, the Priest Radio Corporation, at 693 Broadway in New York City. In an interview with the New York Times, Priest complained about a lack of skilled radio engineers in the country and how colleges should have been getting some of their students into radio engineering years earlier. Priest had to hire radio talent from foreign countries to build up his engineering staff. In the January 1926 edition of The Radio Dealer, Priest writes about how 1925 was a good year for radios and expects 1926 to be even better. One jobber source reported that the Priest Radio Corporation lost $90,000 the first year in business and $300,000 overall before the company went bankrupt on March 22, 1927. At the Priest Radio Corporation bankruptcy auction, William Priest bought back his old manufacturing plant and continued in business under the International Television Radio Corporation banner and began his work in television. In the July 1938 edition of Radio News, Priest describes how his new system of television will replace the cathode ray tube and whirling discs that were the current ways of turning television signals into pictures. Turns out Mr. Priest was a bit over-optimistic. Well, that's it for this video. There'll be more to come as we continue to investigate the early history of the world's first true mass medium, radio. Thanks for watching.